says it's recording. All right, so let's give this a shot. There's a little red light blinking at me, which means we're either recording or Skynet is becoming self-aware. Or both. I'm going or both. both. Maybe yeah. this video leads to Skynet becoming self-aware, in which case, John Connor, terribly sorry. Um, our bad. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. Oops. <laughs> I think was like, 2020, we were just talking about this. If 2021 Sorry, is going to be different. No, it's just going to be weirder. Maybe good, maybe bad, maybe depends on which. Definitely uh, weirder. Yeah. However, Movie Maniacs and Film Fanatics, never what I'm pointing out to you in the, in the internet. Um, welcome to a very special chapter of Inside the Circus Tent. Um, <laughs> which is a feature length behind the scenes documentary that was shot during the production of Kill Cables. Um, and during a 19 day production, most things like logic, uh, and stuff like that sort of were left by the wayside because we had a whole fucking feature film to shoot. Um, everything was in a hurry and stuff like that. So we didn't get to talk to every single person we wanted to. And one of those people is here with me tonight. And I hope the internet is doing right screen. He's right there. I'm right it's here. Sean line, um, who plays a very, very really? important lean line. It's lean. Lee, it's pronounced Frankenstein, is how I probably <laughs> uh, <probably. laughs> um, There we go. Um, who has a very important contribution to Kill Giggles, uh, a very important character by the name of Thrillum Willem. Willem. So, Thrillum Willem. We still have the, the jacket is somewhere. Um, I need the jacket. We do. We do. I need to send it to you. I no one else is going to wear it. I'll, I'll actually wear it. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is going to wear that? Well, you'd be, you'd be surprised. The kids these days and the internet fads. <laughs> I don't know. Do people still say fads anymore? Is that a thing? Or is it all just fucking memes now or challenges? That's what it should, yeah, We should have like the Kill Giggles Challenge. What would the Kill Giggles Hashtag Challenge? Hashtag Kill Giggles Challenge. Yeah. Or if you say Octothorpe, that really screws with the kids. They're like, what? Yeah, that's what the hashtag. Well, yeah, Octothor. But it was really, it was like a, oh, right. it was a Middle Ages, like a Middle Ages card, cartographic symbol, like for map makers and stuff like that, because that would denote the little village surrounded by eight fields. Um, but yeah, it was an Octothorpe. You can bring it up a little bit further and just say pound sign, and that still confuses them. I could, I could, but I don't know what the conversion rate is. Like, I don't know what the the dollar to pound thing is. Um, and then it's like, and then, and then you're just you're a hop, skip, and a freeway step away from going down to Pound Town. Um, in which That's case, we, we completely lost sight of the middle. You English really think you're going to edit this down to like you know five, seven, maybe ten minutes? You think that's I was happen? hoping to come in under the ten minute mark, but I. Do you think we're going to get under a uh, recording in under a half hour? Like, well, I, mean, I, have to, I think I think Zoom shuts us off at like forty minutes anyway. So um, <laughs> good. We have to, we have the Zoom like for the love of fuck, right. nobody wants to see this. <laughs> and then I'm permanently banned from Twitter. I'm like I don't I don't care about politics. <laughs> It's not wants to see a fat guy on the toilet right now. It's horrible. <laughs> fat guy on the toilet. Da, 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 da. Well, I, see, it's I, like I, my, I think I should have my own show. Like I, I, I should have my own show, and there should be a segment like fat guy on the toilet. It's just like, like toilet, deep, deep thoughts with Sean. I mean, no, I'm literally I'm in, in the toilet intentionally for you. I mean, one, I thought this was an appropriate place for you know interview like this. But well, two, course. we're very high class here on the show. Behind me. Gah. Gah. Don't you like clown date with fucking funny? <laughs> I oh, figure okay. if there's one clown you can at least you at least appreciate. Uh, I know you don't you don't like the guys. The clowns. No, not fond of them. Not fond no, of them. No, not at all. <laughs> no, no, not not. In but not I figure if there's one that you can appreciate, it's got to be Captain Spaulding. You got to give it up for the captain. Pour a little bit out for the captain. So. So that's a good segue, man. That's, yeah, how, that's how this whole thing started, right? Into movie I mean, magic. Well, I was going to say, like, the, the story of us. Yeah, like, we, yeah. we've known each other for a hot minute. Do you remember how it started? I do. Um, we've got, because you're Willem and I'm Blue. You're and Blue. People, people right. are going to look at us and be like, what? Okay, so like, Blue's easy. Color. You still got the blue eyes. You got, you got those magical blue eyes. You still got those. <laughs> a little bit of red, white, um, blue right now. America. But at the time, your hair was blue, too. Yes. Stood out. Now, this was 01, 2001. It's going on 20 years, man. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, we met, uh, we met at some event. 
I don't know how Carolina it went from theater. Because didn't we lock eyes yes. across the room? It was like that slow mo, like crane shot up from one level to the next. <laughs> There was, there was a little magic moment. There was. <laughs> it seemed like it, yeah. Unless I'm just yeah. making that up now. Yeah, we, we had a moment. We had a moment. We did. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> again, back to the how this all about started. We had a moment. We did. Uh, all the little Easter eggs in this conversation that'll lead up to how we got to uh, to kill giggle, right? Yeah. No, I don't remember how it went from the theater to us hanging out. Um, I remember you weren't part of the crew that I'd gone to the place with. I don't know how the hell it came together. All I know is next thing I'm like hanging out at a bar with you and they're all talking about Buffy <laughs> and going to someone's house to watch Buffy. You guys were like obsessed with Buffy. That's a, that I remember that. Yeah. And I had appreciation for Buffy, but I was not nearly on that kind of like love kind of. You got me a little bit there. You know? Full frontal nerdity, that kind of thing. Yeah. Hanging out with you guys got me a little bit there. So that was good. But yeah, I don't remember how the jump started, but eventually you and I just connected over our mutual love of Kevin Smith. Love, admiration. I mean, I'm a fat guy from Jersey Shore, who grew up on comic books. I still have my black trench coat. Like, I swear to God, like, there's, there's a kinship there. There's, you know, <laughs> there is. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a beautiful thing. You know, but I get him, right? So, and I had this great love of his, of him. And you did too. And we started talking about Kevin Smith. And that that was our connection. All right. I don't remember much else in that earlier time other than Kevin Smith and Buffy. That's <laughs> remember Kevin Smith and Buffy, and then there was there was the Nevermore Film Festival, because that was where we saw the North Carolina premiere of Bubba Hotep. Um, yes. And then also Alan Roe Kelly, who we both know, because from, the weirdest, from another lifetime. Yeah, right. Because the weirdest of up, like overlapping concentric social circle place um she had a movie that was screening that night too so it was, was that it was uh crazy but i'll bury you tomorrow absent. yeah and there was absinthe involved yep. everyone's just like that's a great idea in theory and then you imbibe it and you're like not a good idea not a good idea not good. <laughs> there was like no, i was cool. awesome I'm cool. I'm cool no <laughs> that was a beautiful place to see bubba hotep that was awesome um, yeah the carolina theater in durham they ran the trailer for uh, Army of Darkness beforehand. Mm -hmm. I do remember that. It was a beautiful moment when the entire theater just rang out <laughs> in the lines of the movie. It's just like I, I found my people. This is <laughs> awesome. Oh, I just remember I like I love I think Willow because Bubba Hotep um, has one of the best horror scores ever. Like I love uh, Brian. I think it was Brian Tyler is the, the one who wrote the or yeah composed the score for that film. And I, I, it's one of my like three or four favorite scores to be able to write to. Um, so I can never write to anything that has lyrics and singing and stuff like that. Like shit, mm. or just, I, I have enough voices in my head at any given time. I don't need other people helping. Um, I've got to try and distill it out, you know. Um, but the love of Kevin Smith and that led to, cause you, I mean, you just, you were Willem to me and it led to I was, a multitude of sailboat jokes. And I'm like, yeah, no, those are, they, they keep coming. The, the then, um, keep coming. You're like I see a schooner, <laughs> a little kid, and then like you ruined you, Tom bastard. <laughs> and then people learned a little bit about etymology, maybe nautical terms. So like, oh, a schooner, and then they they got into other boats and stuff like that, and it led to them uh, to great seamen, I, <laughs> or women, sea women, sure. sea sea people, women. Her people, brine shrimp. They're fucking brine shrimp. Mer man, sorry, <laughs> mer mer fuckers. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah man. So, I was blue, and I was I was I was a it was Willem and Blue. I was a Kevin Smith collector. Pretty much everything I had had a signature on it at some point. My ex wife made a joke like, if he signed his underwear and sold it, you'd buy it. I'm like, eh, maybe. This part's but gonna I be painful, to... folks. Just gonna let you know the pain. The pain's coming right now. I'm gonna get <laughs> awkward here for a little bit. So at some, some point, point we were talking. You. you were telling me about your your fear of clowns. And I said, I got a movie you got to see. Because it wasn't, it, was, it wasn't Kevin Smith. It wasn't part of this universe. Um, but it was one of his guys made a movie called Vulgar. And it was... <laughs> I'm like, maybe you'll appreciate this. I'm like, yes, it's a clown. Well, what the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> but it's a clown that gets gang raped by a bunch of rednecks. Yay. Like, you got to take some pleasure in that, don't you? I mean, a little... I mean, I, 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 
It's, <laughs> it's a gray so or a murky <laughs> brown area. I don't know, dude. <laughs> All puns intended. Um, <laughs> I figured if there's going to be a movie with clowns that you might appreciate, maybe it'd be this one. So I lent you the DVD, which also happened to be signed by the director. Signed DVD. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what'd you do with that? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> it was stolen by terrorists, which is inevitably what uh, <laughs> led uh, to the political state of the world as it is now, I can only imagine. Um, that's what I like to tell myself at night. Uh, in reality, uh, however, <laughs> lent it to a friend. I'm like, you got to check some, and like, yeah, I hate clowns, blah, blah, I got to watch it. Cool. Uh, I lent it to him. And I'm like, uh, can I get the movie back? Crickets. <laughs> I need to get that back. Not mine. I don't know where it is. Kind of let you watch it under the impression that like you borrow something you give it back that's why it's called fucking borrowing not like Funny, yeah, yeah put a flag thing. in it now it's mine you know <laughs> like fucking flag no the cunning and clever <laughs> use of flags had not been appropriated yet for our so cruel of the world um so i let my friend this movie uh and then they just like hey, 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 hey. uh <laughs> so then i had to come up with a clever thing i was just like oh i need to watch it again i'll get it back to you real soon oh uh, <laughs> Kool Aid got spilled on it, so I'm having to just professionally clean. I'm like, as soon as it comes back from the cleaner, I'll ship it on ahead. And I don't remember like, how long this went on, but at some point, I left North Carolina, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm I'll moving. Send it to you. Can I can I get my movie back? <laughs> and I think that's when you finally let it go. Like, oh, I don't have it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. Long story, painfully, slightly not as long. Um, yeah, my friend just fucking lost it, and I I had no idea how to make it up to him. Um, because I mean, it's like it's a science. And you felt, thing. I'll give it to you, you felt really guilty about it for, I mean, it was I a decade, did. oh god, how long was it? I guess, because it was 04 when I left, it had to be a decade later when you were like, I have a way to pay you back. Yeah. And I'm like, god, don't worry, it's not a big deal, don't worry, don't worry. No, it was, because it, it never left my head, never left my head. And I appreciate various that, other man. sundry things. Um, so my way to make it up to my dear friend Willem uh, was I had this idea brewing uh, on the back burner of my, uh, in the, I don't know, the mental meth lab of my skull. Um, I don't know who's cooking what back in there, but it smells weird. Um, had the idea for Kill Giggles jostling around in there. I want to make a movie where we kill clowns. Um, and then that sort of led to a thing. It's like I started writing out like all the different, well, like, different ways we could kill clowns. How many can there be? Uh, I have a box of composition books over there full of pretty much nothing but line to line clown death. So at my <laughs> commitment hearings, that uh, will be People's Exhibit A. <laughs> that should speed the whole process up to where they'll flip through it and be like, yeah. And then I get a nice, comfy little, cool white leather jacket with uh, tight arms uh, and a Motley Crue back patch on it. Um, so kill giggles. Lots of clouds. Yeah. What um, are we talking about? Yeah, I don't know. Fucking schooners and sailboat nautical things. Uh, Dick Cavett and uh, uh, cravats, I think. Um, we should have cravats. I'm going to get his cravats once this movie comes out. Anyway, to make it up to Dear Willem, I was like, I've got an idea where, you know, a movie where we're going to kill clowns. And I, you have to be a clown. You have to be a clown in this movie. And it has to be Thrillem Willem because it was like, you know, like, things that rhyme with Willem. And then I was like, Book them, bill them, bill them. Uh, I started like the Bono magnetic poetry kid. I was throwing shit that rhymed on a fridge, and then the thrill <laughs> part. Um, and then the thrill and Willem. Thrill and Willem was born. Thrill and Willem. But I had to sell them on it because um, it, it had to be important. It couldn't just be any mere paltry quotidian plebeian clown death. Not for my dear Willem. No, no. Thrill and Willem. Sell the thing. Didn't have to sell to shit. Work. We're dangerous. We're venturing into dangerous territory because spoilers. Because a movie will come out, so we can't spoil it. But you already released the first ten minutes in which I died. So, well, we didn't. We didn't release it. We had a sneak preview of it. Like it's okay. It's secret out there. It's secret. Uh, I, I think. I think we can say there. yes. Where your 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 character has uh, most of its exposition um, takes place in a mall. Uh, There's that hallway scene where I mean you emote the shit out of I mean everything you know. Um, but it, you, Thrillum Willem meets his, 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 he shuffles loose this mortal coil and floppy fucking feet in a mall, uh, which in is actually mall. the Eden Mall in Eden, North Not Carolina. just any mall. 
but the dying mall that was a mile from the house that I lived in when I lived in North Carolina. Like just, <laughs> Circle it was like going home. It was crazy. Yeah. So that was my way to make it up for you, was to make you a clown who dies in a mall. We can't actually say how you die, because that would be giving it away. Needless to say, I feel that security officer LaFours would be most impressed with our homage. <laughs> you don't know who LaFours uh, is? Yeah. You don't know who I mean, LaFours it's all, is. <laughs> it's all there. It's all just an homage. It's, it's mm -hmm. crazy. But I, you didn't even have to sell me. You didn't have to do anything. You hit me up once, and you're just like, Hey, listen, I figured out how to pay you back for losing your DVD. I'm like, oh, no shit, really? What, what's going on? I'm going to make you die as a clown in one of my movies. It was like, <laughs> fuck yes. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, so this is what, I don't care. Just, <laughs> yes. Do the thing, yeah. That's fucking awesome. Let me die as a clown. So what, what was it like to be on set, sir? Um, let's get a little bit of your, cause that, that, and that catches up, I mean, the who, the why, the what, the where, and stuff like that, but to be on set, because, I mean, you flew in from Austin, Texas, had a little bit of time here, but it was kind of like we flew in, we got to drive in a car together and listen to music while I changed the Oh, uh, yeah, that was cool. Um, that was cool. Um, don't smoke anymore. It was I mean, good to see you again. I mean, it was cool. Anyway, so how, like, what is it like to be on set? So, in case the rest of the story didn't give it away, I'm no actor. <laughs> what? I'm like... I'm a computer geek, artist, singer. I do a lot of things, but I'm no actor. So for me, being on set, I mean, it was nuts. I've done some video shoots. I've done some like random other things, but I was impressed. I don't think I ever told you, like it really impressed the shit out of me when I walked on set and saw all the people and all the equipment and everything and everything running. I was just like, this is real. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Cause in my head, it's always just been, I'm going to go be in blues movie. Yeah. I'm gonna fly out there. We're gonna hang out. I'm gonna do some shit, and you know. But I never really imagined what it'd be like to be on set. So the first time I heard like talent walking to set, I was like, "Oh me? Oh okay." <laughs> You're like, "Oh, who's here?" <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! There's someone with talent. <laughs> <laughs> and that was all. That was our second day of filming too. That was day number two. Oh, that was wild. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the weirdest point for me. Okay. Because this kind of blew my mind. I don't think I ever told you about this either, too. So you had you had your makeup guy, who Mr. Joe, my face for like an hour and a half. To, it was some ludicrous amount of time for clown makeup, but you know, did an awesome job. He was great. But then you had your um, costume designer, Soraya Davis. She is a genius. She was awesome, right? So it was cool because. We talked about the size of my clothes and shit. And, you know, I'm not a little guy. And I show up and everything's too small. Right? She took that jacket, tore off the sleeve, ripped open the back, took off the leather. She made me a bigger jacket yeah. on set. Like, that was mind-blowing to me. Right? <laughs> In, like, 30 so the, minutes. It's like... <laughs> right? Yeah, no, seriously. The genius was on display, right? But the kindness... She basically, when she was done with the costume stuff, pretty much followed me around with a bottle of water and like a thing to fan me with because I was pouring buckets in sweat, North Carolina in the summer. I was like, I'm not, I'm not made for this. <laughs> this isn't right. I can never properly explain myself in this climate. Um, so she, like, she was just awesome, constantly have a drink. No, I'm, I'm good. She's like, no, seriously, drink some more. Okay. Like she literally took care of me for the rest of the day, right? So that was awesome. But this is when it got weird. At one point, I'm standing there and she's fanning me, and then I look over and there's some other I don't know random crew member fanning me, and I turn around and your AD is fanning me, <laughs> right? And that's when my brain went, "I know you have more important shit to do." <laughs> I'm like, that's "Stop! Terrible. Stop! 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 Stop!" They're like, "What?" I'm like. This is too much. I can't deal with this shit. Like this, <laughs> you have more important shit to do. I don't even know who you are. Thank you, but like, <laughs> this is like this moment of just like way too diva for me. This is not going to work. I don't need three people, including the AD, directly like fanning me, <laughs> so I don't die. I mean, I'm glad I didn't die. No, that was that was exhausting. That was exhausting. It was, it was. and you, you you bled for your art too, sir, didn't you? literally blood literally Literal. not not cg blood literal blood blood sweat and tears yeah man 
I don't know. Just keep, just keep dropping to your knees. This is all part of my fantasy. Just keep <laughs> in my head, it looks great. Oh, by the way, fuck your knee bones. <laughs> uh, fuck, fuck your knees. Seven more takes for safety. <laughs> Are you really bleeding? Yes, I'm really bleeding. Oh my god, we got no, no, no. Just keep going. Can we this mic your knees to get the bone crunching sound? <laughs> the, the grid of ligaments on then. Awesome. Just uh, can't make that shit up. Willem drops to his knees. Willem slowly crawled down to his knees because. <laughs> Because he dropped the decided to live in the Eden Mall. He's still there. This is the bathroom at the Eden Mall, folks. He just moved in. I don't even know what they did with it. I think they sold it like the day after we filmed there or something. So I don't know. I don't even know if it's still there, it's still standing or what. I have no idea. Yeah, that was yeah. It was all iffy. What was going on with that place? Yeah, it was kind of. It was it was crazy too. Because it's like we need a place with an arcade. And I went there like one time, and there was an arcade there. And I went back the next week, and everything was boarded up. I'm like. There was an arcade there. <laughs> um, so, but with the clever and brilliant graphing and lighting department we had, like they put the lights on the inside of it, blew the smoke and stuff, so it looked like an arcade. And then we found a place where we cheated for the interior. So it's like movie magic made it seamless. So like we, and it, it was just to me. I mean, that location was beautiful because I mean, I grew up in the backroads of the backwoods of Missouri. So it's like I remember having to drive thirty five minutes to get to the dirt mall. Like it wasn't even convenient. Like that was we're going out of town to go to the yeah. back mall you know they had like the factory outlets and all the shit they didn't even have like a b dalton or a walden books it was like the the shitty version of the gift of the bookstore but it was something you know it was something the trailer park kids i mean we'd take whatever we could get um and to me i mean that that mall aspect like i mean you know because I, I looked at like malls around here and everything is shiny this is before the apocalypse obviously so i mean everything is shiny and there's a hot topic everywhere and just people i'm like ugh, people are the worst um, so I wanted to find a dying mall with dead people and just nobody in body. <laughs> you you found it. And we found it in Eden. We found it in paradise. Cinematic paradise, folks. The Apple Mall. Yeah. <laughs> Craziest thing. That mall had like maybe three businesses still in it. Yeah. Three, four running like businesses. Open when we filmed. Like there was like a, a text. And yeah, it was. One of them. One of them was my friend's shop. <laughs> so someone I haven't seen in like forever. I don't expect to see him. I, you know, I'm going to dead mall to get dead. <laughs> and I walk in, I'm like, how you guys doing? <laughs> oh. It really was. It was a trip home, man. It was crazy. Again, just the, the, the beauty of overlapping concentric social circles. Like, I mean, the fact that you and I met and then, you know, we end up going to the Nevermore, you know, the Nevermore Film Festival or like, you know, I, I get to watch Alan's film and I have no idea who the fuck Alan is. And then years later, I'm on a film set, Mama's Boy, I'm getting done up in makeup, I'm wearing fishnets and fuck me pumps and everything else like that because I played a very pretty character. Because I, I haven't really talked to Alan a whole lot. Do what? Because it was Tuesday. Yeah, no, it was, a, it was a Sunday. It was the Lord's Day. <laughs> That's how I roll. Um... But yeah, and then Alan, like, and I mean, I like, I was having like on my third cup of coffee, and I mean, I couldn't smoke inside, everything, and stuff like that. And like, I'm looking at Alan, you know, she's doing my makeup and stuff. I'm like, do you like what? Can we listen to music while we do this? And she was just very trepidatious, like, uh, yeah. So I'm scrolling through my phone. I'm like, do you like ELO? I love ELO. Me too. So we listened to ELO's like greatest hits like three times over and over again. Oh, that's awesome. In my makeup, and I looked fantabulous, even though it was freezing. Um, but you know, see, seeing that movie there, and then realizing that fact that I saw her movie eighteen fucking years earlier, and then like now she's putting makeup on me on my friend Sam's film set. So I mean, it's just the way that all these little social circles line up. All That's amazing. Make something fun and fulfilling out of what seems to be an otherwise chaotic and shitty apocalypse. You know. Right, it's just, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, think about back, back when I met Alan, my God, fabulous person. <laughs> and I have not, I have not spoken face to face with him probably since, oh, once since I left Jersey. Wow. Like she was a friend of a friend of my ex-wife's or something like that. It was, it was so bizarre. So that to, to bring that back around and like you guys, you friends, man, it's fucking that's awesome. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully we'll get kill Gales to play at a nevermore film festival and i am bring you back and then like well it'll be back full circle we'll fly alan in and there'll be absinthe and the apocalypse will have properly fucked off and we can go do things and hang out again and be grateful and appreciate what we have instead of burying our faces and phones at bars with people 
Like, I'm going to come to Austin. I want to hear you sing that son of a bitch song. Because I was like, that's my anthem for 2021. I'm just like, son of a bitch. And I'll just sing the entire song. <laughs> I'm like, son of a bitch. And I don't have a horn section. And the boy just, he, yeah, he, he's not into it. I'm like, you need to pick up, go get friends and have a horn. Fuck. And I wanted like a little mini mariachi band around, but COVID. Yeah. <laughs> but COVID, it's the only reason. I, I just, I, I no, mean, honestly, no mini I, mariachi band. Uh, yeah, at this point, yeah, if I was gonna have like a, a yeah pint sized mariachi band follow me, and I'd just be rad. Like I have a mariachi, like a pint sized mariachi band following you around, scoring your daily existence. Except for like I don't know, I mean like if you like like what would toilet music be like? I guess it all depends on what's going on. I don't know. It's a uh, we'll 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 workshop it uh, with the kids in the next episode <laughs> if we get a next episode. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get canceled like Chevy Chase here in a minute because I think my 40 minute Zoom meeting runs out in two. <laughs> So, just in case we do, uh, my dear friend, thank you. Thank you for uh, being here tonight. Thank you for being a part of Kill Giggles. Thank you for not telling me to fuck off all those many, many moons ago because I would have. Um, thank you for not getting me. Thank you for to be part of Kill Giggles. Man. Yeah, I mean, it's just, but uh, like, and, and your, your, death, your death scene and movie maniacs and film fanatics, when you can see Sean die, you will truly appreciate anyone that has those sort of mall rat inclinations will truly appreciate uh, the stock full of sentiment that went into the death of um, our, our, good, our good friend here. Was that too much? I went through a tunnel, so they maybe didn't hear that part. Um, but, it's, uh, it, it, but yeah, it, just to be able to have you on there, and I know things were crazy on set, and I didn't get to spend the time with you that I wanted to, but we had this time tonight. And it I was to tell fucking you, great. Your, your death scene was very me. important to me. <laughs> your death scene was important to me too, man. I, we, I don't know if you remember, I, I told you on the way out, I was just like, I will be in any one of your movies ever again. Just say the word, I am there, as long as I get to die. Yeah. If well, I have yeah. to live through the movie, I need to see the script. I got to, like, you know, think about it or whatever. But if you, if you just want me to die in one of your movies, I'm there. I don't really care what's going on. Yeah, well, we've got and there. There are there are ideas <laughs> percolating in the back of my brain. I'm writing a bunch of shorts right now. I've got to finish one more called Death Calf. Uh, which is a sequel to Lunch Ladies, uh, ideally. Um, and then, like, we're going to turn goth kids inside out <laughs> and explode them. It's going to be a hoot. Uh, and then the one I do after that uh, is going to be Let's Kill Cancer, where we're going to corporealize and then kill cancer, like just kill the shit out of it. Because, uh, um, yeah, so I'll make you, like, I don't know, Captain Hugs a lot. And, then, like, you'll be, like, you'll be, like, hugging people. That's oh. not like, like a comet falls on you or something. I don't know. I'm, I'm um, in. Yeah, we'll figure. Yeah, hugs, you got me dying. I'm good. That's all. I, I mean, it, yeah, it should be a win-win. You, you could be like, you could do like, be doing karaoke while you do it too. And like, we'll just we'll get all, we'll get all, we'll hit all the fucking railroad spikes with our penis. It'll be cool. Just gonna follow me around for a little while, film stuff that I do on a regular basis. Yeah, it'll just like I'll be like, oh, this is B-roll, and then like that's that's your whole shit. Dude. Like that's it. You don't even have to leave the house. It'll be cool. Like, Drop a piano out of an apartment on my head, and you'll be good. No one has to put on pants. It's not that highbrow. I'm, I'm on the toilet. You tell me, do I have pants? No. I, I don't <laughs> Camera person, pan down. Now you're thinking about it, aren't you? A little bit. Is it weird I see you like, I, like I'm trying to think of like the boxer shorts and like, and like fucking clown shoes. Fucking clown shoes. God damn it. Fucking clown shoes. <laughs> My friend, thank you. I'm going to try and distill this down. It's, it's probably just going to be like 40 minutes long. I'll be like, uh, and, uh fuck out of it. <laughs> I'm like, it's existential this way. <laughs> I don't know, but I can't wait for you to see the film. I can't wait for you to see your oh, death on screen. I'm stoked, man. It, it's going to be riveting. Um, as far as I know, well, because Austin Revolution, we were supposed to be there this year, but they postponed, well, wait. Everything. It's still, still March yeah. of 2020, right? I think it's still March of 2020. Um, there's an Austin Revolution coming up soon. I think it's 2021, I think. Or is it It would be this year, yeah. Well, no, I just, I'm trying to remember, like, if they just, I, I don't know. But the Austin Revolution Film Festival um, will we'll be there. Otherwise, I'll just come down and I'll go to Thorne's house, who was my AD, and he lives there. And, like, we'll just watch a movie at his house. And you can come over and we can barbecue. And, like, Thorne's you, here? Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Thorne, yeah. I mean, he, he, yeah, he's born and raised in Austin. Oh, no he, shit. He pictures of all the snow. Um, I don't know where he lives at, though, in Austin. He lives over on the left side, I think. Or okay. the... Right, it's somewhere between the left side and then the right side, and then uh, in between north and south, uh, in that general four direction. The general area, area the, yeah. the four-sided. Well, then knowing dimension. Austin, like it's it's a four-sided area with six sides because they're like fuck math. <laughs> I don't know, they're weird there. Anyway, I love you. Keep sir. Austin three-dimensional. 
you're, you're, you, you popped the cherry on my, our, our, our very first uh, uh, Inside the Circus Tent clown interview extraordinary. You are the first one, sir. It's never going to get any better than this, but we will die. It's all downhill from here, man. Absolutely, it is. It's, uh, but oh, what a wonderful tea party. <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right, you finish pooping uh, and then go out of the bathroom. Um, you've been on there for a long time now, and that, that can't be good, dude. Like, muscles start to atrophy. This is how hemorrhoids happen. You try and get up, and you're all like fucking James Conn in misery, and you're like, Arr! and then you fall over. <laughs> um, and it's just it's not good. <laughs> Kathy Bates shows up with a hammer. <laughs> it's like, fuck. Shows up. She's already here. All uh, right, true. Cool. It's a Tuesday. <laughs> what well, is really snowy there, too? I mean, I forgot. It's misery. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if I chop this down, I'll send it to you. If not, I'll just send you the 43 minute long version. Um, but thank you, sir. I appreciate you very, very much. I love you, brother. All right, I'm going to stop hitting record now. We're going to like stop recording.